Fat Tuesday, great day to be presenting on a topic I love to talk about, business objects as part of BI strategy for the next decade. So here we are at the beginning of 2022, and we're just one year into this, uh, this decade, and um, we're already starting you know, to see um, some interesting things um, happening, of course. And the one thing, of course, that we can't ignore is that we've been in a pandemic for the last two years. And, you know, it's been very interesting um, that a lot of organizations um, had to struggle uh, during the early parts, first six months of that um, pandemic, when there were lockdowns and shutdowns and people working from home to try to figure out a new way of uh, doing things. And then as the pandemic progressed, we started to see lots of other issues, you know, from supply chain to transportation issues to many, many other things that um, perhaps everybody was not prepared for. And of course, in, in this kind of situation, business intelligence, which is all about you know, what's happened, what is happening and what could happen becomes more and more important. But at the same time, these are variables that perhaps most organizations did not think about. Um, and they've had to um, very, very quickly um, adopt and adapt to new ways of doing things. And the one thing that became obvious during the first year of the pandemic and was even just as obvious in 2021 as well, was that time, resource, and budget constraints uh, made life very, very challenging. Um, so here we have a world where business intelligence is more important than ever, but at the time we have a shortage of time, a shortage of resources, and a shortage of budget in order to execute on that. And so what happened and what has continued to happen right during um, those two years is the fact that people have leveraged what they have in place and taken more advantage of it. So rather than go out and buy whole new business intelligence systems, whole new data warehouse systems in the cloud and do massive projects, those projects have kind of been put on hold uh, for the most part and pushed down the line a little bit. And people have focused more on let's do what we can with what we have. And business objects being in place uh, in so many places out there um, has really come to the fore once again uh, during this time. And when we look at this world of business intelligence, the experts have been telling us for years now that self-service BI is definitely the way forward and, and so forth. I mean, you know, six or seven years ago, Gartner said that we had already passed, you know, the tipping point and that the majority of people were doing self-service BI as opposed to, you know, just being consumers um, of BI. They were wrong and they continue to be wrong um, as well. And, you know, a recent survey that came out from uh, Dresna and the Wisdom of the Crowds, um, which was based around, um, you know, self-service BI, um, you know, said, look, self-service BI has climbed all the way to number six in terms of its importance and significance uh, to CIOs and to, um, and to top organizations around the world. But guess what number one was? Number one was reporting. And number two was dashboards. <laughs> so <laughs> that tells you that here we are <laughs> in 2021, 2022, where the two most important things in business intelligence to people who are running business intelligence in major organizations around the world is reporting and dashboards. And that's not going anywhere soon um, uh, in the, uh, well, that's not going anywhere in, in, in the next few years. That's exactly where it's going to stay. And the majority of business intelligence users will remain consumers of this information. They won't be the people there 
banging away, analyzing it, drilling into different dashboards. No, they will be people who will be consuming the information, maybe going through a guided analysis um, within a dashboard, but um, they won't be wasting time right, uh, digging into the data and doing the exploration um, of themselves. And so what we've seen in the business objects world um, that happened, you know, um, a few years back and has continued to stay in that mode now is that the business objects customers live for the most part in a state of coexistence. If you look at those numbers there, um, you know, we do surveys pretty regularly every six to 12 months. Um, those numbers are, are pretty current today where you can basically say that 85% of business objects customers in the US today are using either Tableau, Power BI, or both Tableau and Power BI. 85% are. So with that, this state of coexistence is standard. It's not just logical, it's standard. The reason why it's logical is because tools like Tableau and Power BI are not reporting tools. They were never designed to be the kind of tools that, um, uh, that you do reporting with. They're designed to be data discovery tools for the power user. They're designed to quickly put together data visualizations and so forth. And just to add to all of this, and I know this might be a controversial statement, but I just want to make it clear that SAP's strategy of a new business intelligence or analytics platform, as they call it, SAC, SAP Analytics Cloud, um, is not a contender in this space at all. So, um, you know, it might be good, you know, to offer bundled, um, you know, package with some of their cloud-based applications, but as a standalone BI platform, um, it's, uh, it's not even in the ratings at this point. So I'm gonna give a few examples of these coexisting customers that, that, uh, that are out there so that you, you, you know, you'll relate to it yourselves. You'll see you're probably one of these clients um, yourselves as a global paint manufacturer that leverages business objects in order to deliver Tableau dashboards. So they are pulling data through business objects, feeding that data into a Tableau dashboard and then publishing that dashboard in Tableau, right, for users um, to look at and visualize uh, the data with. Um, a great example of coexistence between business objects and Tableau. And a national supermarket chain, right, who uses crystal reports for all their critical out-of-stock reports. So, you know, 3,500 supermarkets around the country um, and all this information coming in through the cash register saying what, you know, um, what got sold today and so forth so that they know exactly what to put on the truck to send to each of those stores overnight to restock the shelves. Um, and all of that is being done in crystal reports. Um, at the same time, they use Power BI for all of their self-service data discovery and visualization. And so they use a combination of crystal reports from the reporting side and Power BI uh, for all of their business intelligence um, uh, and visualization needs. <clears throat> um, and also there's customers out there who have figured out that business objects and web intelligence in particular um, has a lot of interesting capabilities now with BI 4.2 and BI 4.3 um, that allows them to do the whole end-to-end -end, um, of business intelligence. And so a very large national drug distribution company, particularly important during the, uh, during the pandemic for shipping out um, you know, important medicines and vaccines and so forth um, all, over the, uh, all over the country, um, 
had to have a way to quickly be able to see exactly where these shipments were at any point in time. And they attempted to put something together um, in Tableau, but all of the data was already there um, in business objects. And they were, you know, um, they were having trouble with the, the, the job flows going straight into uh, Tableau. And so what they ended up doing was creating webby dashboards using the capabilities of 4.2 and some of the, um, uh, and some of the uh, additional extensions that you can now put on there with, um, with custom elements uh, to bring in third party uh, visualizations uh, into web intelligence. And they created this entire um, application for tracking right the distribution um, of all of the uh, of the transportation of all of the drugs um, all over the uh, all over the country um, and so there's an example right um, again where you know customer had multiple tools but then decided business objects was the best tool to use uh, for that particular situation. So I'm going to take a poll at this point, and I just want to see how many of you um, are uh, are using the different versions of uh, of business objects. So Lucy, if you want to put that poll up, hey Lucy, can you? There it is. There we are. So which version of business objects are you using? Bi four point one. 4.2, 4.3, or an earlier release um, than BI 4.1. All right, we're going to leave it for a few other seconds. And uh... okay, all right. Well, we can see, Paul, that um, we have around 82% uh, that they are still in BI 4.2. 9% BI uh, BI4.1 and uh, currently other 9% in the BI4.3. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. no, nobody on the early releases. And that's what I would expect to find 80% plus using uh, BI4.2 uh, today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's carry on talking a little bit more about customers who are using business objects for the first time. Um, because it's not just existing customers who have moved to this state of integration and coexistence with Tableau and Power BI, but we're also seeing brand new customers adopting business objects for the first time. So uh, we had this deployment at a real estate um, investment trust company where they wanted to get better insights into their customers' um, investment portfolios. Um, and so they were doing all of this analysis, right, using Excel, where they were looking at the financial numbers quarter by quarter, um, you know, of these clients trying to predict, you know, where those numbers would be, um, you know, in the coming year, trying to predict if they would be a good, uh, a good tenant, a good investment, because as well as, um, you know, offering the accommodations, they also offer loans uh, to their clients um, as well. And, um, you know, they had a department of four people who just spent all day long going through these, uh, uh, these Excel analyses, trying to uh, figure this information out. So um, we helped them to create a data warehouse in the cloud. Uh, we use business objects, web intelligence for doing all the reporting and analysis. We used Tableau for the data discovery and Squirrel 365 for the dashboards. And so we sold them this combination um, of, of tools and most importantly, um, a, uh, a data warehouse uh, to be able to now bring all this information together and very quickly see exactly, right, um, what's going on. And now, you know, instead of four people sitting there analyzing this in Excel all day, they can quickly go to a dashboard, as can all the executives and all of the key people in the organization go to this dashboard and make decisions in minutes um, rather than wait days uh, in order to, uh, to do this. Um, at the same time, they can use right this combination tool set today um, to do many, many different 
um, things within their organization, which have not been possible before. Um, a medical imaging lab as well, basically needed, um, uh, um, you know, to have a BI reporting solution for their ERP system, which they had just uh, implemented as well. And again, Business Objects was a perfect fit for that. So um, again, they use Business Objects Web Intelligence for doing all of their reporting um, and initial analysis, and they use Squirrel 365 for creating uh, dashboards within the organization as well. And these are new name accounts that never owned BI tools um, uh, before this in the last, uh, last couple of years. And then we also did a deployment at um, a city government that was responsible for um, all of the uh, uh, ticket violations, parking tickets, code enforcement tickets, uh, red light camera tickets. Um, they did uh, uh, took care of, um, of all of these. And again, they needed something to integrate in this brand new bespoke system that was being uh, developed for them for doing all the reporting. We use Crystal Reports and integrated it directly into the application itself um, and used Business Objects Web Intelligence uh, for doing all of their reporting um, across, uh, across the system. So the great news about Business Objects is BI 4.3 is now ready uh, to go. And BI 4.3 is going to be, you know, the BO release uh, for the next five uh, to six years. And so it's going to be the dominant uh, business objects release of this, of this current decade. Um, I'd like to do another quick poll now and just see how many of you are already looking or already have moved uh, to BI 4.3. I think we only had 9% um, who were there on the first poll, but how many people are looking to move uh, to BI 4.3 um, in the next 12 months? So the question is, do you plan to move to BI 4.3 in the next six months, 12 months? Uh, not for at least another 18 months. You don't have any plans or you're already on BI 4.3. All right, results are coming in. Let's end it and share the results, Paul, so you can view. All right. Yes, not everyone's answering the questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> give enough time. Okay. Um, but anyway, even based on the few that, uh, that, that have answered, we can see that 55% are looking uh, to move in the next 12 months, added to another 18% in the next six months. So what that tells me is that, you know, we're already at 70% of customers looking to go um, uh, in that time. And if you add another six months onto that 18 months, you get another 18% there, which is the majority of people. Only uh, one customer doesn't have any plans at this time. So that's good news. BI 4.3 Service Pack 2 um, is definitely um, uh, a stable version to go to right now. Um, the next service pack will not be out until December of this year. Service pack three will come out in December of, uh, of 2022. And SAP plans to release one service pack per year uh, going forward, um, which is great because that gives you a lot of time and stability now um, knowing that, you know, service packs are going to be uh, one year um, apart. Uh, you know, I mean, we're dealing with a business objects is over 30 years old. <laughs> it's a very mature, uh, very robust um, application these days as well. So BI 4.3 had a brand new HTML5 UI. We've been doing a lot of sessions on this during Let's Speak BO. We'll continue to do a lot on it. Um, that's the big change where, you know, people who uh, are doing report development uh, really need to, uh, to get used to that. But um, it now has, with Service Pack 2, complete parity with all the features in 4.2. And you've got um, this new uh, interface for faster development as well. A lot of other new features came with 4.3. Um, Webby is a data source, data enrichment. Um, uh, OData Connector um, is there now, 
um, Google Docs as a data source as well, the advanced formula editor, um, a lot of, uh, of nice little features coming along and, and more will come. And um, we will be uh, talking at IBIS this year in June uh, also about what's coming in uh, 4.3 Service Pack 3 as well. So something to look forward to there um, as well. And as I said, it will be the, the release for the next five years. Um, another quick case study here, USPI, the largest ambulatory platform in the US, um, very excited about 4.3, looking to leverage that Webby as a data source uh, to simplify and, and save time and resources on some of their processes that they do um, in web intelligence today. Um, and also, um, uh, USPI uses Squirrel extensively. They have somewhere between 18 and 20 different uh, Squirrel applications where all of them are being fed directly from business objects feeds uh, straight into the uh, Squirrel application and, uh, and Squirrel dashboard. So they're literally running uh, the operations and many of the uh, clinical BI aspects uh, of the organization on that combination of uh, business objects and, uh, and Squirrel. Business objects in the cloud. Um, Business objects can be easily hosted in the cloud. Uh, we do have um, quite a few customers now. In fact, let's ask that as our third poll question right now as to how many of you um, are already running in the cloud, you're running your business objects in the cloud, and how many of you are planning to run your business objects in the cloud. So if you could put up the third and final poll question, uh, Lucy. So do you move, do you plan to move business objects to the cloud in the next six months, 12 months, not for at least 18 months, no plans, or you're already running your business objects in the cloud? All right, let's leave it up for a few more seconds. Okay. All right, so let's end the poll. And there you go, the results. Okay, so interesting that, you know, we've got 55% with no plans. Um, in the next, nobody in the next six months, 12 to 18 months, we could have about 45% um, looking to do it uh, in that time period. So that's, uh, that's interesting. And that makes sense as well. Um, I think it's going at a much slower pace than the industry would lead us to believe. Um, you know, most customers that we've seen move to the cloud are using their own private cloud. And so basically you just take your on-premise business objects licensing and install it on your private cloud um, and continue to run it there. Um, so that's the most popular method for people moving to the cloud today. Business Objects announced last year um, a new offering there, Business Objects Private Cloud Edition or PCE as it's known. Um, we don't know of any customers who have moved to that at this time. It's, um, it's, quite, um, uh, it, it, it's quite expensive to do it, uh, to put it bluntly. Um, and um, you, you would have to look at um, if it made strategic sense uh, for you to do that. SAP would be hosting um, on hyperscale um, and um, they would do one upgrade per year for you as well as uh, backups and recoveries. You would still be responsible for moving all of your content uh, to the cloud and you would also be responsible for continuing to do the um, uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, administration and so forth of your uh, of your your deployment there from a application standpoint, um, and then of course there's other third parties who are also offering uh, private cloud where you can host business objects there um, as well. So those are your your options. It really only makes sense, and I know I, I must sound like a broken record on this, but you know when the majority of your data sources that you're accessing with business objects, go to the cloud, then you move business objects to the cloud. Do not move BO to the cloud if the majority of your data sources remain on premise. It doesn't make any sense. 
um, and you will have performance and security issues, I guarantee. Um, what to expect from SAP? Um, well, no major changes. Um, <coughs> why change a good thing? <laughs> uh, <coughs> business objects is, as I said, mature, it's stable. Um, you know, they're continuing to enhance um, web intelligence and uh, keep up with the different um, operating systems and databases and, uh, and, and so forth. So I think you can expect solid stability continuing um, with business objects uh, going forward. Um, as I said, one service pack uh, a year will have new features in it as well as fixes as well. Um, SAP has you know, said that they, they really want to push everyone to the private cloud edition. Um, and you know, they, they did announce at IBIS last year that their plan is, is that they will only support um, Business Objects Cloud Edition um, starting in 2028, um, so six years out. Um, but I don't know about you, but I, I kind of get a bit skeptical about anything being predicted that far ahead uh, these days. Um, so, um, uh, so I think we'll see a lot of different changes in strategy between now and then. Um, Paul, well, it seems that we have a couple of questions that came in. Yep. Uh, first one, crypto reports, is SAP looking to roll into Webby and eventually Sunset CR? No, there's no plans for that um, <clears throat> at this point. Um, crypto will remain continually, uh, con continue to be supported um, for the foreseeable future, uh, along with web intelligence. Uh, the base of embedded crystal customers is huge and <clears throat> it's just not viable or feasible for those customers to switch um, to anything else. So um, the plans are to continue to, uh, to support both crystal reports and Webby for the foreseeable future. All right, I have one more. It says, any way to gain access to a 4.3 environment to learn that? It's got to be hands-on, not online learning. Um, yeah, you, I mean, <clears throat> okay, so if you are under maintenance with um, SAP uh, on your business object environment, you could download 4.3 today and you know, put it up on a sandbox. Uh, and then you can play with it to your heart's content. Um, so as long as you have the software, um, you, you could definitely uh, um, you can definitely do that. And so a lot of customers have already done that. They they've already downloaded 4.3. Um, they've got it on a sandbox and they've started to play with it while they continue to run their operations on um, on 4.2. All right, uh, one more. In 4.3, will Webby as a data source make it Webby content available to other apps such as Power BI? If so, is that already in 4.3 SV2? Well, it's a good question, but it, it, it not, not directly. There is an OData connector that gets released um, with um, 4.3 SP2. And so that OData connector um, could provide you with the capability of feeding right, data into Power BI, um, you know, for, for example, from, uh, from Webby. So it, it is possible, um, but um, it's new. The OData connector is, 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 uh, is new per se, and there are some restrictions in it. Um, we started to look at that and we've kind of said, yeah, there's a lot of things that are missing here where um, it depends what you want to do. But in theory, yes, um, you know, it, it's possible to use that the OData connector delivered with 4.3 Service Pack 2 to feed data from Webby into Power BI. Okay. All right. Almost there. Um, So let me get to my next slide. So I often get asked this question, and I'm sure you do too, by your uh, management and so forth. 
um, is business objects going away? And uh, you might notice that I've got a picture of vinyl records there. <laughs> because everybody thought vinyl records were going away. <laughs> and they're the hottest thing out there in the music industry right now. Um, and so is business objects. Um, business objects, as I said earlier, has been around for more than 30 years. And I have to ask the question, where is the BI reporting alternative? Um, because it's not there if you look at Tableau, and it's not there if you look at Pearl BI, and it's not there if you look at a lot of these you know, cloud-based tools that are supposed to be the next generation um, of business intelligence. And as I pointed out, um, the world uh, still sees reporting as the number one thing that they need. Um, so, um, so I don't see it uh, going anywhere until we start to see um, viable Right, reporting alternatives come to the fore, and we're not seeing that uh, at this point in time. So, business objects is not going away, um, and you know, even though, as I said, SAP talks about only supporting it in a cloud-based version from 2028 onwards, six years out. Um, who knows where the world will be and where all of us will be uh, six years from today, um, but. You know, SAP has made announcements like this before, uh, where Lumira was going to replace business objects. Uh, I seem to remember um, a few years back, and then SAC was going to replace business objects a few years back, and none of that's happened. Um, and Crystal Reports was going to go away based on the questions somebody just asked, and that hasn't happened either. <laughs> so I think we can safely say that business objects is here to stay um, for the. Uh, um, for the next decade, and maybe even um, uh, beyond that as well.